1670, English scientist John Mayo came up with the idea of external negative pressure ventilation. Mayo built a model consisting of bellows and a bladder to pull in and expel air. The first negative pressure ventilator was described by British physician John Dalziel in 1832. Successful use of similar devices was described a few years later. Early prototypes included a hand-operated bellows-driven spirophore designed by Dr. Woylez of Paris, 1876, and an airtight wooden box designed specifically for the treatment of polio by Dr. Stewart of South Africa. 1918. Stewart's box was sealed at the waist and shoulders with clay and powered by motor-driven bellows. The first of these devices to be widely used, however, was developed in 1928 by Philip Drinker and Lewis Shaw of the United States. The iron lung, often referred to in the early days as the Drinker respirator, was invented by Philip Drinker, 1894 to 1972, and Lewis Agassiz Shaw Jr., professors of industrial hygiene at the Harvard School of Public Health. The machine was powered by an electric motor with air pumps from two vacuum cleaners. The air pumps changed the pressure inside a rectangular, airtight metal box, pulling air in and out of the lungs. The first clinical use of the drinker respirator on a human was on October 12, 1928, at the Boston Children's Hospital in the U.S. The subject was an 8-year-old girl who was nearly dead as a result of respiratory failure due to polio. Her dramatic recovery within less than a minute of being placed in the chamber helped popularize the new device. Boston manufacturer Warren E. Collins began production of the iron lung that year. Although it was initially developed for the treatment of victims of coal gas poisoning, it was most famously used in the mid-20th century for the treatment of respiratory failure caused by polio. Danish physiologist August Crow, upon returning to Copenhagen in 1931 from a visit to New York where he saw the drinker machine in use, constructed the first Danish respirator designed for clinical purposes. Crow's device differed from Dringer's in that its motor was powered by water from the city pipelines. Crow also made an infant respirator version. In 1931, John Haven Emerson, 1906-1997, introduced an improved and less expensive iron lung. The Emerson iron lung had a bed that could slide in and out of the cylinder as needed, and the tank had portal windows which allowed attendants to reach in and adjust limbs, sheets, or hot packs. Drinker and Harvard University sued Emerson, claiming he had infringed on patent rights. Emerson defended himself by making the case that such life-saving devices should be freely available to all. Emerson also demonstrated that every aspect of Dringer's patents had been published or used by others at earlier times. Since an invention must be novel to be patentable, prior publication slash use of the invention meant it was not novel and therefore unpatentable. Emerson won the case, and Dringer's patents were declared invalid. The United Kingdom's first iron lung was designed in 1934 by Robert Henderson, an Aberdeen doctor. Henderson had seen a demonstration of the drinker respirator in the early 1930s and built a device of his own upon his return to Scotland. For weeks after its construction, the Henderson respirator was used to save the life of a 10-year-old boy from New Deer, Aberdeenshire, who had poliomyelitis. Despite this success, Henderson was reprimanded for secretly using hospital facilities to build the machine. The iron lung, also known as a tank respirator or negative pressure ventilator, is a medical device that was used to assist individuals with respiratory failure, particularly those affected by polio. It played a crucial role in the treatment of patients during polio outbreaks in the first half of the 20th century. Design The iron lung is a large metal cylinder that encases a person's entire body, leaving only the head exposed. The cylinder is airtight and its interior is equipped with a system to create negative pressure. Negative pressure ventilation Unlike modern ventilators that use positive pressure to assist breathing, the iron lung operates by creating a vacuum inside the chamber. This negative pressure causes the chest to expand, allowing air to flow into the lungs, and then decreases to let the patient exhale. Polio epidemics During polio outbreaks, many individuals, especially children, experienced paralysis, including paralysis of the muscles used for breathing. This led to respiratory failure and the need for external assistance. Respiratory Support The iron lung provided vital respiratory support for patients with paralyzed respiratory muscles. It helped them breathe by simulating the natural action of the diaphragm and chest muscles. Long-term use Some polio survivors required prolonged use of the iron lung, often for weeks or months, until they regained sufficient respiratory function. 
In some cases, individuals use the iron lung for years. Polio Treatment Centers During polio epidemics in the 1930s to the 1950s, polio treatment centers were equipped with iron lungs to accommodate the rising number of patients. Advancements in Polio Vaccines The development of polio vaccines, such as the Sock vaccine and the Sabin oral vaccine, significantly reduced the incidence of polio, leading to a decline in the use of iron lungs. Legacy While iron lungs are no longer in widespread use due to advancements in medical technology and the near eradication of polio in many parts of the world, their historical significance is profound. They symbolize both the challenges posed by polio and the innovative efforts to provide life-saving respiratory support. Museum Exhibits Some iron lungs have been preserved and are displayed in museums as historical artifacts, offering a tangible reminder of a bygone era in medical history. The iron lung represents a significant chapter in the fight against polio, and its use highlights the collaborative efforts of medical professionals, researchers, and the public in addressing a major health crisis. The iron lung was a life-saving device that played a critical role in providing respiratory support for individuals affected by polio during polio epidemics in the first half of the 20th century. Its success can be evaluated in the context of its historical use and impact. Life-saving intervention The iron lung was instrumental in keeping individuals with paralyzed respiratory muscles alive during polio outbreaks. It provided mechanical ventilation allowing patients to breathe when their natural respiratory muscles were compromised. Prolonged use Many patients relied on the iron lung for extended periods, sometimes weeks or months, until their respiratory function improved. In some cases, individuals with severe paralysis needed ongoing assistance and used the iron lung for an extended period. Increased survival rates The use of iron lungs contributed to increased survival rates among polio patients with respiratory failure. Without such mechanical ventilation, many individuals would not have been able to overcome the respiratory challenges associated with polio. Temporary Respiratory Support The iron lung provided temporary respiratory support, allowing patients time to recover from the acute phase of polio. As patients regained some muscle function or received other medical interventions, their reliance on the iron lung could decrease. Resource Intensive The iron lung was a large and cumbersome device and its use required specialized facilities. Polio treatment centers needed to have sufficient resources and infrastructure to accommodate patients requiring iron lung therapy. Long-term dependence For some individuals, especially those with severe and lasting paralysis, the iron lung represented a long-term solution. However, the prolonged use of the device presented challenges related to patient comfort, quality of life, and logistical. Considerations Advancements in vaccines the most significant impact on reducing the need for iron lungs came with the development and widespread use of polio vaccines, such as the Sock vaccine and the Sabin oral vaccine. Vaccination efforts led to a significant decline in polio cases and, subsequently, a reduced demand for iron lungs. Technological Advancements Over time, advances in medical technology led to the development of more portable and versatile ventilators, which gradually replaced the use of iron lungs. Legacy while the iron lung is no longer in common use, its historical significance lies in its contribution to saving lives during polio epidemics. It symbolizes the medical community's innovative response to a public health crisis and the collaborative efforts that eventually led to the near eradication of polio in many parts of the world. The success of the iron lung was marked by its role in providing crucial respiratory support until effective vaccines became available. While the iron lung was a critical and life-saving device during polio epidemics, there were some controversies and challenges associated with its use. Resource Allocation The construction and maintenance of iron lungs required significant resources, and setting up treatment centers with these devices was expensive. Controversies arose over the allocation of resources, especially in regions with limited financial means or during times of strained healthcare infrastructure. Limited Accessibility Iron lungs were not universally accessible, and their availability varied depending on geographical locations and the resources of healthcare facilities. This led to inequalities in access to life saving respiratory support, raising ethical concerns. Dependence and quality of life. For individuals who became long term users of the iron lung, concerns were raised about their quality of life. Living in an iron lung for an extended period could be challenging, 
and questions arose about the psychological and emotional well-being of those who depended on the device. Logistical Challenges The iron lung was a large and cumbersome device, and its use presented logistical challenges. Transporting patients who were inside iron lungs was particularly difficult, and this limitation could impact the ability to provide care in emergency situations. Technological Advancements As technology advanced, more portable and versatile ventilators were developed, making the iron lung somewhat obsolete. Controversies arose over the transition from the use of iron lungs to newer technologies and concerns about the appropriate timing for such transitions. Vaccination Controversies The iron lung era coincided with the development and introduction of polio vaccines. Some controversies arose regarding vaccine distribution, public perception of vaccines, and concerns about potential side effects. However, the success of vaccination campaigns eventually led to a decline in the need for iron lungs. Ethical Considerations Ethical considerations were raised regarding the prioritization of patients for iron lung use, especially during times when demand exceeded supply. Decisions about who would receive access to the life-saving technology raised ethical dilemmas for healthcare professionals. It's important to note that while these controversies were associated with the use of iron lungs, the device itself played a crucial role in saving lives during polio epidemics. The controversies often stemmed from broader issues related to healthcare infrastructure, resource allocation, and the challenges of responding to a widespread public health crisis. During the polio epidemics in the first half of the 20th century, many individuals affected by the disease, including notable figures, used iron lungs for respiratory support. Here are a few examples of individuals who were known to have used iron lungs. 1. Franklin D. Roosevelt the 32nd President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt, contracted polio in 1921. While his specific use of an iron lung is debated, he did use other forms of respiratory assistance, including a wheelchair equipped with a breathing apparatus. 2. Neil Young The Canadian musician Neil Young had polio as a child and used an iron lung during his recovery. He later became a vocal advocate for polio vaccination. 3. Paul Alexander Paul Alexander was an American author who wrote about his experiences with polio in the autobiography Man in the Iron Lung. He spent many years in an iron lung after contracting the disease. 4. Martha Mason Martha Mason was an American poet and journalist who spent much of her life in an iron lung due to paralysis caused by polio. She wrote her autobiography, Breath, Life and the Rhythm of an Iron Lung, about her experiences. 5. Mark O'Brien Mark O'Brien an American poet and journalist, spent most of his life in an iron lung due to polio-related paralysis. His life story was the inspiration for the Academy Award-winning documentary, Breathing Lessons, The Life and Work of Mark O'Brien. 6. Robin Cavendish Robin Cavendish, a British advocate for disabled individuals, contracted polio and used an iron lung. His life and advocacy work were depicted in the film Breathe. These individuals, among many others, faced the challenges of living with polio-related paralysis and relied on iron lungs for respiratory support. The use of iron lungs was a common and necessary intervention during the polio epidemics, and many individuals who contracted the disease benefited from this life-saving technology. The iron lung was invented by Philip Drinker and Louis Agassiz Shaw, American engineers and researchers. They developed the iron lung in response to the polio epidemic in the early 20th century which caused respiratory paralysis in many individuals. The device, officially known as the Drinker Respirator, was first introduced in 1928. It was a negative pressure ventilator that surrounded the patient's body, creating an airtight chamber. The chamber's pressure could be alternated to induce inhalation and exhalation, assisting individuals with respiratory difficulties, particularly those affected by polio. The invention of the iron lung was a significant advancement in the treatment of respiratory failure caused by polio and other conditions. It provided a means for patients to breathe when their natural respiratory muscles were weakened or paralyzed. The iron lung became a symbol of medical innovation during the polio epidemics and played a crucial role in saving lives until the development of effective polio vaccines.